Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today for today's edition of Arkansas Live. All week, we're talking about, Lord, what do I do? How to make right decisions. I'll share some personal examples, natural examples, but I want to build a case, a foundation first on what the Word of God says. It's something you have to build. It's not... There's no easy solution to these things. There's no snap of the fingers. There's no flipping a switch that makes everything different. The frustration of the uh, inflation in our culture today is not something that can be uh, changed with uh, a formula. It's something that you have to build. And that's what I'm uh, trying to, to show you, not to offend you, but the first thing you have to do is to, is to open the windows of heaven for the blessing of God. You do that with the tithe. And then you give offerings after you start tithing. Then you give offerings, sowing seed. And then you begin to see the harvest come up. And I'll give you all these examples in the scriptures. And I believe today, what I'm gonna share from you out of Kings, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, will really excite you and energize you. So stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. You know, it, it can be uh, it can be a really alarming when you're facing financial challenges and you want to keep your commitments to God. I remember one time when my son Ronnie was he was actually he graduated from Bible college. He came back home and he was gonna. You know, like all young men, go start his own life. He got his own apartment. He was going to, you know, start his life uh, away from home, away from mom and dad. And um, he had gotten a job uh, as with a, a company, and he wasn't doing so well financially. And so he went to a financial counselor, and they looked at his uh, expenses and all that, and they saw where he tithed uh, every paycheck. And they said, the first thing you got to do is cut out that tithe. He said, and then you'll have that money to pay bills and do such and such. And I was so proud of him because he was raised this way, and all that that we'd sown in him over the, uh, his life came out. He said, no, I can't, I can't stop tithing. Why not? He said, because... The tithe is what opens the windows of heaven. The tithe is what enables God to bless me. So he said, take that off the top. That tithe is not optional. Well, God delivered him out of his financial situation, the, the problems and the pressure and the stress, because he refused to give up the tithe. The tithe is, is simply honoring God with a tenth of your, of your increase, in, income. And the tithe is what opens the windows of heaven. Then after the tithe, and you can find the tithe not only in Malachi 3.10, everybody wants to revert back to the Old Testament, but Jesus talked about the tithe in Matthew 23.23, 23, and he said you should not forsake it. You should not not do it. You should keep tithing. That's in the New Testament. And then you start giving offerings. Or offerings are used for harvest. The tithe opens the windows. The harvest is the seed sown. Uh, I mean, the uh, offerings are the seed sown for the harvest. And we'll look at that in Proverbs 11. But right now, first, I want you to go over to 1 Kings. I, I love to read these things because they, they bring faith and it, it's exciting and it energizes you. 1 <laughs> Kings chapter 17, uh, let's begin with verse 1 and we'll go to 16. Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. It shall be that you shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. There's famine there's drought, all kinds of problems and pressure. 
And God is leading him, directing him, telling him what to do. And he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and did. And he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and the bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook and it came to pass after a while, the brook dried up. Does that sound familiar? The brook dried up. This source of income or this source of revenue dried up. It says the brook dried up. Hmm. And so um, <laughs> the word of the Lord came unto him, verse 8, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a water woman to sustain you. And here's another uh, way God's going to take care of him. He just said, you're going to have to change some things. So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, the young woman was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. <laughs> and she said, As the Lord God lives, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruse. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Boy, that's some bad news. That's a bad situation. We, we don't have anything and we're not expecting anything. And, you know, we're going to go eat what we have and die. Well, don't eat your seed. Plant it. That's what he said. He told her, he said, if you will uh, fear not, and go and do as you said, but make me thereof a little cake first. That's symbolic of putting God first. If you'll make me a little cake first and bring it unto me, and then after that, make for you and your son. Oh, the audacity of this prophet <laughs> taking food out of the woman's mouth. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth or, uh, or giveth rain to the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and her house did eat for many days. Marginal references for a full year, for a full year. She gave to the man of God, even though she had nothing. And, you know, people would make fun of that and criticize it. But that was the leading of the Holy Spirit. That was obedience to God. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore, there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, man of God? Are you coming to me to call me my sin to remembrance and slay my son? And if you read the rest of the story, he even, God even raised up her son. Elijah was the vehicle that, that he used to raise up uh, her son. He did not die. But what I want you to get out of this is they didn't have anything. They had no money. But God told them to give to the man of God. And what did he do? He multiplied her oil uh, and her meal. I've, I've experienced it. I've done that uh, myself. When we had a need and we didn't have any, any money or any way to meet the need, the Lord would tell us to sow an offering. I remember early in the ministry, we had a, a need because we were behind, uh, let's see, we were behind $15,000 on our radio bills. We had just started on the radio at that time. This is back in the 70s. And we were behind 
uh, about three months, about 5000 a month. We were behind three months. And we needed $15,000 to pay those radio bills, and we didn't have it. And so the Lord uh, spoke to us and led us to uh, plant, to sow, to give our best seed. And our best seed at that time was our automobile. And we're thinking, okay, we're willing to do it, but how are we going to get around? Well, we had a van that we traveled in, and so we gave our automobile, we sowed it, and we drove the van if we were in town, because we were gone more than we were home, and we gave the automobile, and we met with the minister that we owed the money to. He owned a bunch of radio stations, and we were on seven of them. And I wanted to tell him, I, I don't know whether you know it or not, because it, it was a big ministry. I said, but we owe you $15,000. And he did not know it. But I said, I just want you to know we're going to pay you. And he looked at us and he said, how do you know you're going to pay me? And Jeannie spoke up and she said, because we sowed our best seed. He said, what do you, what do you mean by that? You sowed your best seed. She said, the best seed we had was our car. It was paid for, but we're giving, we gave it to a minister. We gave it, and we're going to get a harvest back. And he looked at her and just kind of slurked it off. Now, we're sitting at, in a restaurant eating lunch, and she's telling him this. And he just said, ah. Oh. He said, all you did was give your car away. Well, you don't say that to my wife. Well, she hauled off and slapped him on his shoulder, respecting the man of God. But she just hit him. She slept. She said, no, we didn't. We gave our car and the instructions of the Lord and God will supply our need and we will pay you the $15,000 that we owe you. And he said, okay, okay. <laughs> well, long story short, God did meet that need. One of our partners called us. They knew of the need and they said, the Lord told us today to send you $20,000. Whoa, praise the Lord. This was back in the 70s. And so we were still traveling at that time. So we took that $20,000 and we went down to his ministry headquarters and walked in there and walked up to his bookkeeper and handed her a check for that $15,000 and said, we're here to pay our bill in full. Oh, she was elated. She said, Pastor Caldwell, she said, I want you to look over here at this stack of folders. These are all men uh, of God that are on our radio stations that can, can not only not pay their bill, they won't answer their mail, they won't answer their phone. And she said, it's such a blessing for you to come in here and pay this bill in full. And uh, she mentioned the minister's name, said, Brother so-and-so will be, be thrilled to hear it. Well, God blessed us $15,000 to pay the radio bill, but he blessed us with a $5,000 increase and we never again, after all those years, we never again had a radio or a TV bill we could not pay. That was a, an opportunity. That was a test. Yes, we were a family of three and we had needs, but the Lord told us to sow our car. Now, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say, is it doesn't stop there. <laughs> We not only got the, the financial blessing to pay the bill, but a few months later, uh, a, a man and his wife asked us over to their house for lunch one day after church. And they said, the Lord spoke to us to give you our car. Whoa, wow. I, I thought, you mean to keep? He said, yeah. He said, the Lord told us to give you our car. It was a better car than we had sowed and said, the Lord told us to give you our car. So we not only got the money to pay the, the radio bill and $5,000 increase, but we got a no, new car out of the deal. I mean, it wasn't brand new, but it was a, a new car to us. So God always has something better in mind, but you have to obey him. You have to do what he says. Give and it shall be given unto you. We, we weren't giving to get. We were giving out of obedience to the Holy Spirit to sow a seed and to do what he called us to do. 
Now, these are biblical examples. Let's go over to 2 Kings. Flip over to the next one. These are, I love to read these things. They excite me even today. 2 Kings, and let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets to Elisha. Uh, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. In other words, they're going to sell the kids to get the money that the husband owed. But notice, if you read this carefully, it said, my servant did fear the Lord, which, which counters in Malachi 3.10. This man was a tither. He feared God. He loved God. He was a, by all means, he was a tither. And so Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in the house. And she said, your handmaiden hath not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Now that was valuable in those days. And then he said, go borrow all the vessels, all the neighbors that you can, even empty vessels, borrow not just a few. And when you come in, you will shut the door upon yourself and your sons and you pour out all those vessels, and you shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon uh, her and her sons who brought the vessels, and she poured out, and it came to pass when the vessels were full. Now listen to this. When the vessels were full, uh, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. He said, Mom, there is no more vessel, and the oil stopped. God is not wasteful. He will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. It didn't say he'd supply your need according to the need. He said he'd supply your need according to his riches. Listen to the rest of it. Then she came, verse 7, and told the man of God, and he said, go and sell the oil and pay your debt and live you and your children on the rest. Exact same thing he did for us. He met our need according to his riches and glory. He gave us the money we need to pay our radio bills and then gave us a $5,000 tip. And we were debt free. We didn't owe anybody anything. We didn't owe that ministry anything anymore. And we still had some to live on, on the rest. Now, I, I want to pray for you because this is how God works. He gives you an example of his word. And then he gives you an opportunity to exercise your faith and to do what the word says. And so I want to pray for you right now. If you're facing financial difficulties, financial stress, and, you know, like uh, one viewer partner told us, said, I, I have to make a decision here whether I'm going to pay my uh, VTN pledge, my partner pledge, or whether I'm going to put food, food on the table. Well, you know what, what I know in my spirit, what God would do in a situation like that? Because fear tries to come. Anxiety, worry. Uh, we're not going to make it. We're going to starve to death. What, how are we going to make it? We're, li we're living on a fixed income, they say. You know, well, God can unfix it and he can increase it. But you have to take a step of faith. If I were facing that situation, and I have, if I were facing that situation to spit in the devil's eye, I would say, now you watch me, devil. God's my source and he's going to take care of me. And I am not going to be afraid. I've made a vow to God. I've made a pledge and I'm going to keep it. And I'm not going to do without food for me and my family. Just to show you, Mr. Devil, I'm going to cook a meal and take it to the next door neighbor. Or I'm going to pay somebody else's grocery bill. I'm going to bless somebody else. I'm going to sow into the kingdom of God. And you won't have to pass that test but once. But when we get older, we get fearful that God's not going to take care of us. Because when we were young, we made a job. Uh, we worked at a job. We got a paycheck. Uh, we maybe had two incomes, husband and wife. And now one of them's passed. And maybe you're struggling or maybe you were divorced and here you're facing the situation all by yourself 
and said, no, devil, you're not going to cause me to fear or be afraid. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for our viewers and our partners. I pray that you would encourage them, that you would excite them, that you would anoint them, give them wisdom and knowledge, show them exactly what they're to do, and they will obey you and they'll do it in faith and you will cause their situation to change, to turn around. You will show them that you're not only able to provide for them, but you're able to provide for them abundantly. And I'm asking you to do that, Father, in Jesus' name. Do it today. Amen. Now you watch and see, God is going to intervene in your situation. Now, I want to go to some personal examples. And I mentioned to you Proverbs 11. In uh, Proverbs chapter 11, it says in verse uh, 24 and 25, it says, There is that scattereth, and yet increases. And there is uh, that withholdeth more than is fitting, but it tends to poverty. If you let Satan scare you and trap you into withholding, we can't afford this, so we're going to withhold it. We're going to hold back. Um, what you do when you do that is you actually create the situation that you're trying to avoid. What you're trying to avoid is poverty. Poverty is a spirit. Poverty, poverty has very little to do with money. That's why no government has ever been able to eradicate poverty with money. America has tried to do this for generations. Uh, you remember back the administration of Lyndon B. Johnson? He was going to create the ultimate society. He was going to eliminate poverty. And so what he did was he tore down all the, <laughs> uh, all of the projects that people were living in, and all he did was build new ones. And he just, he just put money after money after money, and it didn't change anything. It didn't change the poverty. It didn't change the, the conditions because you can't, you can't fix poverty with money. Money is not the answer to poverty. And we've just done this over and over, generation after generation. We just throw money at do more money, more money, more money, do this, more money. That doesn't fix a thing because poverty is not about money. Poverty is a spirit. And it's passed from generation to generation. It's cyclical. And when people are trapped in poverty, they breed poverty. They teach it to their children. And they teach it to their children. And they teach it to their children. It's, it's, it's ongoing. It's a cycle. It's a trap. So you can't stop poverty with money. And he says here, if you withhold more than is necessary, it tends to poverty. But he said, he uh, that scattereth will increase. He that's sowing. And let me read this to you again. Um, offerings are seed for harvest. So when you're giving offerings, that's seed for for harvest, but make sure your offerings are sown into good soil. And the, and the good soil is producing fruit. City, state, nation, and world. Did you know that we are on a faith network in um, South Africa? Do you know it covers uh, the, half, the lower half of that nation plus Europe? They asked us if we would be on that network, uh, a faith network, uh, because they wanted our network airing on their network for all of our programming. Did you know we hear from people in Europe and we hear from people uh, all over the world that watch VTN from time to time? I mean, some of them may not get it on a regular basis, 
but there are people all over the United States that watch VTM uh, via Roku or live stream. And so we're reaching people uh, out to people on a worldwide harvest. So when you sow your seed into VTN, you're, it's going way beyond uh, just right here in, in Arkansas. But it's, it's designed to bless the people of Arkansas, to bless you. And this is why I hurt so when I hear people are hurting and they're struggling. What do I do? Do I give them a tithe? Or do I do without food? Well, no, you don't do without food. You keep your vow to God. You continue to do what the scripture says, and God will continue to bless you. Now, let me give you uh, some personal examples. And this, is, this can be dangerous if you're not uh, careful because everybody's different. Everybody can do different things. But here are some of the things. I already told you about Jeannie's clothes. I told you about our car, told you about our radio bills. Um, God has asked us to do things over the years. Now, this is Jeannie and I personally. Uh, we have given vans to missionaries. Uh, we have paid off church debts. We paid off one church's loan um, and paid it off. That, that church didn't have any more debt after we paid it off. Uh, we have helped people and give people down payments for houses. And uh, over the years, we've learned to listen to the Holy Ghost and to be a blessing. Start by going to the grocery store. And, and when you're in that checkout line, the Holy Spirit may speak to you to buy the person in front of you's groceries. I've done that. It's, it's an opportunity to do that. This is how you grow in this. This is how you learn. And this is how you get the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But tomorrow, I'm going to give you some natural suggestions as what to do if you're struggling financially. So be sure and join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas. And wherever in the world you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on X at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.